and welcome back to the second video in Let's Paint Tankle and Bone Ripper. So this video I'm going to be focusing exclusively, exclusively, on the skin. Now this is probably the most important part of the model. It's it's the biggest part. It's the most prominent. Um, I really wanted to get it right so this took a while to paint I explain why and I go over everything in the video that's why this video is you know a little bit on the long side but it goes it goes over everything I've done in detail uh, why I did it um, and especially there's a bit more detail in the parts like the stitching and all that uh, kind of the, the markings on the skin and the Carabourg crimson wash that I use to make it really stick out and more prominent so hopefully you guys like this video and remember make sure to leave your comment in the section below for me to have let me refer, let me rephrase that make sure to leave a comment below with any of your questions that you want me to discuss in the next video in the third video i'm going to be painting the armor i think it's going to be either just the armor or the armor and all the metal parts um, i'm not sure yet but you, i want your questions i want something to discuss while i'm painting um, and you'll get a shout out while 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 you're uh, <laughs> but you'll get a shout out while I'm at it as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, make sure to leave a comment. Anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. I said comment about a million times. So I'm gonna go. I'm talking over my words here. But enjoy the video. Hopefully it helps a lot. All right. So we're back for the second video. Now this one should be maybe a little bit longer. There's a lot of. Uh, skin to get covered in this video so what I'm going to be doing for the first color is I'm going to be using Bugman's Glow um, all over the skin for a base color and obviously over the grey primer I mentioned in the last video I primed the whole model in grey so I'm just going to slap a tin coat of this all over now I'm not sure how much of it, if I'm going to be using a third or a second tin layer because what I'm going to be putting over this is another coat of Cadian Flesh Tone. So I think I'll just put one tin layer of this on it. Um, it doesn't need to be, I don't need to put too much of it on because again that Cadian Flesh Tone is going to cover a lot as well. So I'll just make sure I'm going to put a tin layer to cover all the skin parts. There is a lot of skin on this and it shouldn't be too bad. I think once I kind of, like, the, like a lot of it is easy to paint over, it's pretty bulky. Because the only detailed parts I really have to watch is the fur, which we got done in the last video. So let me see, and again, a little bit of paint on this, it's, it's pretty, pretty watered down there. Let me kind of, let me zoom in a bit. Let me start on this side and I'll push it all over. All right, so finally, I got most, well not most, I got all of the skin covered in Bugman's Glow. It did take a little while because the big parts here are fairly easy, get you that pretty quick. But then when you come to paint the parts around the fur, it just gets a little bit tricky. You have to, be, you have to switch to a smaller brush and just be careful not to go over any of the the fur that you painted before uh, but it's looking good I'm gonna put one layer of Bugman's glow on him so he's looking pretty pretty nice you know there's a few kind of gray patches coming up just a little bit but what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna be working on the Cadian flesh tone because I know the Cadian flesh tone the layer paint is really thin so definitely two thin layers at least of this stuff um, you know it's, it can be a tricky color to use but definitely what you have to do is work it over um, a Bugman's glow color even when I put it on the on the palette here it's really uh, uh, transparent so I'm gonna have a go here just along this big part See what it kind of comes out like first. Yeah, this is definitely going to take at least two tin coats. Um, but you'll get a nice brighter skin tone overall. Yeah, it's really transparent. 
So you'd probably be better off just like doing what I did, put a bit down and then just spread it around as far as you can and as best you can. Make sure to cover all the, all the kind of deep parts as well as the skin. Um, it is one of the trickier pens to work with I think, I rarely used it. But since it was part of the tutorial I was, I'm kind of loosely following. And I'm probably like as a bit of a challenge to myself as well to, to make it work, you know. Don't be afraid to use it just because you're unsure of it. Uh, but definitely at least two or three tin coats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work away on this and I'll come back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get like all the big parts here covered and then I'm going to work on the smaller parts as well. And we'll I'll kind of come back after two tin coats. And I'll see what it's like from that then as well. Very shiny here on camera. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so I almost think that Cadian Flesh Tone is the perfect color to show off how you need two tin pants. I have the first layer on. It's still a bit patchy in areas. I'm not sure if it comes across that on the camera. But for definite... It needs uh, a couple of thin layers, uh, at least one, at least two. Um, so I have one on, I'm gonna put a second one on now. They're still kind of, like even though they're two, two uh, kind of similar skin colors, you can I can still see like Bugman's glow coming up through the, up through the Cadian flesh tone. So I'm gonna stick another thin layer on that and I will come back to it and see what it's like then. Now that I have another layer of Cadian flesh tone on, I had to actually stick him onto his big base that I got because it was just getting harder and harder to hold him. But uh, now that the second layer of Kitty and Flesh Tone is on, the skin is looking pretty good. Uh, it's looking like a pretty solid colour. Hopefully it will all hold together. So what I plan on doing now is... Let's see if I can leave him this way. I'm going to be using Reikland Flesh Shade. And what I'm going to be doing, instead of washing the whole model, I'm just going to be putting it into the recesses. So I'll kind of, like all these lines here across the stomach, uh, all these kind of deeper parts around here and everything. Uh, just, I don't know, I usually, I'm trying to get out of this habit, I think I mentioned it in the other videos. I really want to get out of the habit of just like putting wash everywhere and then just covering over it with another thin layer. So hopefully this way it'll come out a bit nicer. Let me see if I get in a bit closer. I might have a bit too much on the brush here. And the right and flesh shade should be you know light enough. So it shouldn't be too harsh on it. Let's have a look. I know it's a little bit shiny there. But it can be kind of tricky to figure this out at first. But I just want to add enough depth to make the skin really pop. It's kind of getting awkward on it with the base now, but I really had to put it on because it was getting harder and harder to hold, especially with all this, like the skin is like the majority of the model. So I just needed something to hold on and he's not going to fit into the, the painting handle. A little bit too much on the brush. And maybe I might have to do a little bit of tidying up once I finish this, if any of it goes out too far hopefully it blends into it enough once it dries and it doesn't kind of I don't want it to stick out too much let's have a look up here under the arm here just follow along all the recesses because then I have one more highlight to go over it so hopefully that will it'll blend it all together 
So I'm going to go over all the recesses. Once it's dried and finished, I'm going to show you guys what it's like. And hopefully it won't take too long. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay. So I finally got all the skin parts shaded in. And the skin looks 10 times better. The definition of all the skin tones, the muscle and everything. It looks so much better. The skin has really come to life now. Um, yeah, just a few little parts to kind of tidy up once I put the next highlight on. But other than that, the front of him especially looks awesome. His leg looks really good. It's uh, really well defined. Now, the only parts I didn't do, well, like some of it kind of went in on the. Let me get my brush. Uh, let me see, let me see. Let me zoom in. Is the only parts I didn't do are the stitching and the, the kind of. The scars here like the markings like this and everything is because I'm wanting to do that differently I'm going to use some cardboard crimson on that and then obviously the tail because I'm wanting the tail nearly a lot of the scaven models I do now I kind of have the tail starting off in a normal color as same as the body and then it drifts off to like a darker red so that's going to be done separately as well so for now kind of the last step for the big part of it is to put um, some kind of layer slash well mostly highlight i suppose of kislev flesh on the the real prominent higher parts like the kind of if you can see here the veins and kind of the higher part of muscles sticking up so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to stick some of this on and then that's pretty much it for the bulk of the of the skin the only part left after this really is to do the scars and obviously the tail which i'm going to be doing as well so let me get a little bit of this Kislev flesh. And this is a paint I haven't really used too often as far as I can remember. But I'm only going to be needing very little of it. And I've adjusted the camera a little bit as well. I put it a little bit higher so it's a little bit more sturdier where it is. So it might be a little bit more closer than usual. So let me have a look at the first part. Let's, let's start with... We'll turn it this way. Might be a bit easier for me. I know this base gets in the way. So let me start here on the body part, where this kind of skin part really, it's really prominent, it really sticks up. So this one we wanting to do like kind of thin strokes along it. To really make these parts pop up from the rest of it. And let's just line it back here a little bit. This part with it. One of the fun things I did notice with this model is that Bone Ripper has four nipples. <laughs> uh, well, let me see. Does he have four? Yeah, I, he has four nipples. I never noticed until now. He has one here, one here. There's one kind of there. You can see it a little bit, and there's one just right under this kind of neck thing. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah, that highlighted skin part is even already it's sticking out. It's a lot better. So kind of mostly like the veiny parts, the higher, mostly parts like here. I just want to highlight them a little bit, and mostly in the center of it. Make sure to stay out of the recesses and all that. Just to make the muscles pop a bit more. You know. Let me just try and finish this part here. See what it looks like and again if you have to a couple of tin coats now maybe this might have been a little bit too much let me see what it looks like on camera maybe this maybe i might just go over that part again and i don't know we'll see but i'm going to do the rest of the model here so when i come back i'll have that done and we'll see what it looks like from then all right so i've got the highlighting of the skin finished, which I'm really happy with how the skin turned out overall. Um, like the muscles, the veins and everything really pops out. Especially the leg here, I keep going back to look at the leg. It's really veiny, muscly leg, it's really nice looking. So I'm pretty happy how that turned out. Um, and that's pretty much finished now. That was the, the last thing was the highlight of Kislev Flesh along any of these little uh, little scars, little bumps, any of the prominent skin really sticking out. I didn't highlight any of the muscular uh, muscular parts. I did end up painting back over this with the Cadian flesh on because 
it was just better to go with uh, the really prominent smaller parts and I think it works really well so the last thing to do then for the flesh well not the last thing, I still have the tail but I'll probably come to that last I won't count that for a minute uh, is all these kind of scars and stitches and the markings the last thing to do with them is to put a wash of uh, Carolberg Crimson into those little small recesses the shade so I'm only gonna have to need a real small part of this I'm trying to find I was gonna say try and find a clean patch on my on my paint and thing here but as long as the paint's dry on it I'll just use it here I really like this Carberg crimson crimson it's easy for me to say it's really nice looking shade so what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to work down along the this kind of stitching part or this big huge long scar and I really like the look on this because I've done this in a few models before um, kind of makes like the the wound look a little bit fresh makes it look more real looks like it's still sore and you can kind of let the the shade go like outside of it a little bit to make it look like the skin is kind of infected around it as well I'm gonna need more you know get that infected look maybe if you wanted it you could maybe go a little bit green with this or maybe with some of them actually that's not a bad idea let's see it goes around to the back here just under the armpit I love this kind of Frankenstein look the stitched together look on bone ripper I don't mind spreading it out across the stitches a little bit because I will be going over stitches then separately and it really does look like it looks like if you ever like cut your finger and it gets really like sore and maybe infected a little bit really really good uh, shade to use over a flesh color to get this look maybe if you really wanted it you could oh there's so much on that you could maybe try that blood for the blood god effect on it that technical paint maybe that might be a little bit too much uh, I think that's the only stitching on the front Oh, there's a little tiny bit right here under his under his stomach. It's kind of like an arch shape. Let me fill this part in a little bit too much. Let me spread it down a bit. And then under here, it's not stitching. But right here on the leg, you see the kind of the cuts coming out from the leg here, where like one of the pipes is. I want to get that little area as well. And I can always tidy up if it goes out a little bit too much anyway. There we go. That's looking really nice. I don't think there's any on this leg. What you could do is these little patches here. Like a little patch here in the middle of the fur. which just a bit of skin. It kind of looks a little bit kind of always looked a little bit out of place so if I put a little bit of this in it it'll make it look, look like that's maybe an affected area and that's why there's no fur growing there there's a little part here so I'll stick that in there so I'll see what that's like when it comes back when it's dry I don't think there's any stitches on the top here so I think that's it for the stitching oh there's a little bit here a little bit across this hand here or this arm Little small details like this make this model so nice. You kind of just put like a bit on your brush. Or maybe not that much. Just a little fill in along the recess. And then what you can do is once it's, this part is finished put a little small piece of it it's a little small shade around the edges of it as well to kind of make it look like the skin around it is starting to get a little bit affected and you can always kind of tidy it up then with the Cadian flesh tone if it spreads out a little bit too much a little bit of it kind of hurt too much we'll see what it's like once it dries let me change that 
There we go. Just to make them a little bit more prominent. Give them a little bit more cut. A little bit more colour. Maybe give them a piercing. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Have you ever seen a tankle or a bone ripper model? With a pierced nipple. Yeah, just a little bit around it. Maybe this one's a little bit too much. Just kind of makes them stick out a bit, bit more because they're kind of hard to see sometimes. So, when I was looking through my painting journal, my little painting notebook, just as I thought, I'm pretty sure it was cardboard crimson that I used to wash the kind of the darker colour of the tail. So, that's what I'm going to be using for this one. I just had to double check it. Uh, I'm going to switch to a little bit of a bigger brush because I'm all I'm going to do is paint the recesses of the tail and then see what it's like from there so each line kind of across it might, I might go a little bit bigger around or when it comes to the end but for now I just want to get these recesses painted and see what it's like from there and already I've used too much paint yeah no you know what I'm going to call an audible, I'm going to change it a little bit, I'm going to stick with the way I did the other one. I'm going to paint the whole tail with the wash and then cut, brighten it up from that way. Because I do like how I did that with the other one. So I'm just going to do that now quickly. And I'm going to stick to my way of doing washes from now on where I put as less as possible on it and spread it around. See look it's already started to dry where I put it in there and everything, holy moly. And this will really separate the tail from the rest of the kind of the same skin colors. So I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to do it as best I can. And you guys will see the results in a second. All right. So after a while, there's quite a bit of detail on this guy. So it took me a little while to finish it off. But the skin, everything is finally finished. So the last part I left was I was putting the cardboard crimson on the stitches. And... I put it on the kind of mark in here as well but what I did was instead when it dried the marking here let's see if I can get some skinnier to point it it didn't really look as good with the shade in it so what I put on it was uh, two layers of blood for the blood god it's that technical paint that makes it look really like fresh blood type of effect and I think it looks really nice and um, the stitching the line for the stitching looked fine and then I went over just the little stitches with a uh, screaming skull just a little tiny little bit across the stitches and I think that it looks absolutely perfect I don't think I could have done a better job um, and across the stomach and the lower part of the stomach as well there was a part over this side where I thought this was stitching in here I don't know if it'll come up on the camera as well but the more I kept looking at it, I, I think it's just some like broken skin, like it's stretched across. So I just painted that like skin color and put like a like the blood for the blood got in behind it as if it's like some ripped skin. Uh, the tail is dried, I put a little highlight of, uh, what was it called, what was it called? What was it called? Cadian flesh tone on some parts of her hair to make it kind of pop out a little bit. Uh, but other than that, I just tidied up a few bits, got the neck done. Oh yeah. And the kind of the parts of the skin, I know I said this earlier, I put a little bit of the cardboard crimson wash in around the recesses or just in, a, in about where the fur would kind of come out of, or it's like it's peeling off the skin, just to make give that little bit of a raw look. And I think it worked, turned out pretty well. So overall, we have the skin done, we have the fur done, so I'm pretty sure the next stage is going to be the armor. So we're going to have uh, here... Uh, the same, so kind of the same color for here would be on the guns on the top parts and around here and on his leg. Um, and I don't think, oh yeah, there's a part here on his back that will be done. So I think, well, as far as I know, I have to plan out the next maybe two or three videos to see what's going to be next. But I think it's going to be the armor. I'm going to have to do some research on some colors. Make sure to let me know what you guys think of what colors to do. Um, I'm thinking like an orangey red, I'm not too sure yet. But so far, he's looking really good. I'm really happy how he's turned out. Um, and hopefully you guys like this video. Make sure to hit the like button, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure to put your comments in this comment section below because I'll be reading out comments and questions and feedback on the next video. Um, as well as like I'd probably put it up on Facebook. Uh, 
Facebook groups as well. So uh, definitely check that out if you can. So uh, once again, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys like this. I think I'm on a pretty good roll with this guy so far. And uh, hopefully it will continue. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next video.